ionizing radiation. It can be used as a source of energy, a means to look beneath the skin of a human being and the surface of all sorts of objects, for checking the integrity of welding, for detecting smoke and fire, for measuring and hence controlling the thickness of materials, as a medical therapy and as a diagnostic and imaging tool. It's a hugely useful and beneficial natural phenomenon. But its power is such that it is vital that people, property and the environment are shielded from it. This short film is about the role played by the International Atomic Energy Agency in protecting people who work with ionizing radiation from its dangerous and potentially deadly effects. Using of ionizing radiation may lead to certain harmful effects and as such it's very much important that every person prescribing the use of ionizing radiation is adequately trained and knowledgeable of these effects. Radiation is a form of energy. Some radiation types can penetrate material and cause a process called ionization. Radioactive materials produce such ionizing radiation. This radiation can damage the chemical structure of biological material, like the cells that make up human organs and tissues. It can affect the DNA, which in turn can lead to cancer. The International Atomic Energy Agency is responsible for protecting people and the environment from the effects of this radiation. IEA role in radiation protection and radiation protection program is ensure that actually there are adequate uh, radiation standards and guides in place which are being advocated with member states to use and implement them in their national legislations. In IEA we have a program on occupational radiation protection. The objective of this program is to promoting radiation protection optimization through developing safety standards and the guidelines with an international harmonized approach. And at the meantime, we provide assistance for the application of these standards and the guidelines in the member states. So the major role of the IEA is to bring the contemporary scientific knowledge to the regulatory language, to the applicable language in legislations, and advocate the use of these standards in the member states' legislations. The program concerns itself with all those people around the world whose jobs involve persistent, sometimes daily, potential exposure to radiation. The nuclear energy industry itself goes without saying, but other areas of concern are less obvious. Those working in other industries, including oil and gas, where radioactive sources are regularly used. We have several areas we need to focus on. One is typically nuclear power plants. I do believe the nuclear power plants and the radiation protection programs are well set and well established and more observed in most nuclear power plants. So the other focus which we have in the occupational exposure is to direct attention of radiation protection professionals, of regulatory authorities in countries, to those industries which are not that much under the scrutiny of radiation protection control. This is mining, this is medical field, these are industry like, for example, industrial radiography. But the principles of radiation protection are the same in all workplaces. They're the consequence of three factors that control the amount or dose of radiation received from a source. The length of time of exposure to the source, the distance from the source, and the shielding from the source. Radiation exposure can be managed by a combination of these factors. So the first principle is to limit the time of exposure because reducing the time reduces the effective dose proportionately. The second principle is to maximize the distance from a source because this reduces the dose due to the inverse square law. 
And the third principle is to use shielding to limit exposure, introducing a barrier between the worker and the source. The final area of particular interest to the IAEA is industrial radiography. Ionizing radiation is used extensively in the testing and grading of wells on pressurized piping, pressure vessels, high capacity storage containers, pipelines and some structural wells including those on aircraft wings. The radioactive sources used for this purpose include iridium-192, selenium-75 and cobalt-60. Iridium in a research reactor and then packaging it into a form usable as a source for industrial radiography. These iridium-192 sources are minute, measuring 3 mm in diameter and only 0.3 of a millimeter in thickness. But they're a powerful source of gamma radiation, which can penetrate 100 millimeters of steel. The hot cell operators are protected by 250 millimeters of lead shielding around the sides of the cell and leaded glass at the front, which is nearly a meter thick. The tiny sources are loaded into capsules which are then connected to a jointed cable called a pig's tail. Radiation is like light, it travels in straight lines. So it's very important that when the source is housed within the projector that no radiation escapes the front or the back ports of the projector. To this end, the source assembly is designed of tungsten links which prevent radiation from leaking out the back of the projector. And there is a tungsten labyrinth which is in the form of a spiral that prevents radiation leaking out the front of the projector. The shielded projectors used to house the capsules containing the radioactive source are checked and serviced every time they're loaded with a new source. In addition to the labyrinth, the projectors are designed with a key-operated interlock system to prevent inadvertent removal of the source. Gamma Tech's approach to safety is three words. Safety, safety, safety. Always safety. At the moment our technician is busy cleaning a dual. This is part of the service, of every single service. Locking mechanisms will be checked. We'll ensure that couplings fit correctly, that the lock moves freely. And we'll use a dummy pigtail to make sure that the movement of the pigtail in the projector is safe and that the lock engages every time. Industrial radiography does not have a good safety record and is of particular concern to the IAEA. In some parts of the world there are operators using strong sources in remote sites with little supervision, especially when compared with workers in the nuclear industry or hospitals. Here in South Africa, this distributor of radiography projectors values the recommendations and guidelines provided by the IAEA. The IAEA rules and regulations form the backbone of the South African Department of Health's rules and regulations for radiography in South Africa. And radiographers are trained in accordance with these rules and regulations. Before going out into the field, the radiographer will calculate both the required safe distance from the source to the safety barrier and the time necessary for the exposure. For this, he'll use an internationally accepted radiation safety principle for minimizing radiation doses and releases of radioactive materials. The International Commission on Radiological Protection had developed the concept of as low as reasonably achievable. The acronym is ALARA. And we in radiological professional feel that this is a very important tool. ALARA is not only a sound safety principle, but it is a regulatory requirement for all radiation safety programs. It's one of the cornerstones of the IAEA's approach to radiation protection. Once on site, the first step is to set up the barrier to keep people at a safe distance from the source. An environmental radiation alarm and a slave are set up at the boundary and checked. 
the radiographer also has a personal dosimeter. The projector can now be set up. A tungsten collimator with a 60 degree angled port is taped onto the pipe and the film is taped onto the opposite side. The area is then cleared of people. And just get out the barrier, please. The adjoining properties checked and the perimeter radiation levels checked. The radiographer and his assistant step outside the barrier and the preparations are now complete. The yellow guide tube allows the source to be wound out of its shielded housing in the labyrinth inside the projector and into the collimator. As soon as the source is out of its shielding in the projector, it sets off the environmental radiation alarm. After timing the exposure, calculated in the office, the source is wound back in. When the film is processed, a detailed examination can be made of the metallurgical integrity of the pipe. A safe and quite new alternative to this method is to use a shielding blanket that limits the spread of the radiation. But whatever the advances in technology, radiation protection is ultimately the responsibility of the individual workers concerned and the safety culture established by the organization's management. Industrial radiography companies are under a lot of pressure from their customers to perform uh, a lot of work in a very short space of time. And therefore the radiographers are put under a lot of pressure to do this as well. If the radiographer does not put safety first every single time that he's doing work, it can be a very big problem in terms of danger to himself and to members of the public and can lead to disastrous consequences. It ensures that the good practice on occupational radiation protection is shared about most uh, nuclear power stations with operators. So, under the umbrella of the Occupational Protection Programme, the IAEA provides a comprehensive service to member states and a vital one too. Because with more and more people working with the wonderful tool of ionizing radiation every day, effective workplace radiation protection programs become more and more important. It is essential that the highest priority is given to all aspects of safety so that we can enjoy the many benefits of peaceful nuclear technology while minimizing the risks. Ionizing radiation is a wonderful tool, but it should be used widely.